Welcome to Project Me, the podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Carter, the founder of Project Me, multimillionaire entrepreneur, former TV newscaster, money-making expert, female empowerment speaker, and self-proclaimed office supply addict. My mission is to take the mystery out of making big money. Every week on Project Me, the podcast, I'll share success tips, strategies, and stories from other entrepreneurs, experts, and millionaires, showing you exactly how you can achieve your most exceptional life. Now let's get to it. You are listening to Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast, episode 30, five online business startup tips that I want to make sure you know right away. Hey, guys, first off, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all the listeners, subscribers, and especially the people who have left five star written reviews. We are now number 12 out of all business podcasts on iTunes. And we are at least as of right now, we're like 112 or 115 out of all podcast categories on iTunes, period, like overall out of thousands and thousands of podcasts. So that number fluctuates a little bit more. But For sure, we're definitely like in the top 120. And I say thank you. And thank you so much for putting me at number 12 on the business charts. I'm so happy that what we give you guys here and the guests we bring on and the information that we share is that valuable to you guys. And really, I appreciate the written reviews. That's a big part of um, how you get on those charts. So thanks so much. So let's let's dive in. I know that for those of you who found this episode and are pressing play, you obviously are interested in starting a online based business, or maybe you just started and went, "Uh uh-oh, did I miss something when I started? (laughs) Or you just like to hear my annoying voice. Thank you. My own voice does annoy me, by the way. Um, So yes, there are tips that I wish I did if I went back in time or if I could go back in time, but I can't. So what I can do to ease my own mind is to share those with you. And I'm also basing it off of the thousands of clients and people that I've worked with and companies I've consulted with over my rather long career on areas where they would go, oh my God, I wish I knew that when we started, that would have been a lot easier. Uh, if I only knew that when we started. Yeah, well, it's okay. We know what we know when we know it. And when we know better, we do better. And then hopefully you go a step further and share that advice with uh, willing and listening ears and minds um, to pay it forward and help someone else not be you know, not be in the same situation or help them get get to where they want to go much, much faster. Okay. Number one. So you need to before you start anything, and even if you already started, you can pedal back a little bit. You need to be very clear on who your ideal customer is for what you're initially selling, okay? Not for what you maybe want to sell two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. What you're initially selling to make money. So are you selling um, are you selling life coaching services? Are you selling physical products? Are you selling, um, you know, fitness coaching? Are you teaching someone something? Are you what are you selling somebody? So what is that I- ideal thing? Are you wanting people to hire you to help them create cool travel experiences? What it what is it that you're wanting to sell and then work backwards from that? Okay, who is is going to want to buy that? Who is your ideal customer that would go, holy shit, I need that and I can afford it. And even if I can't, I'm going to find a way because I need help with that. Like my pain is deep enough and my desire is great enough that I'm going to find a way to pay for that. That's freaking amazing. So you work backwards. Don't go too far ahead of yourself. Well, ideally, I want to create this grand e-course or ideally, I'm going to write a book 
and people are going to buy my book. Well, you don't have that now. That's not for sale right now today. And if you want to make money and not spin your wheels, you need to focus on what are you selling today and then work backwards on who is the ideal person to buy that. And I want you to think, like I've said in other episodes, I want you to, you can name the person that helps me. I even cut out pictures of the person. And maybe it's even a friend of yours that you know, that, you know, happens to fit that ideal demographic. Well, take a picture of that friend and have, and put that friend on your desk. And that's your person and give it a name. It, it personalizes it for you and it helps you mentally really visualize in terms of like money mindset stuff, but also in practical terms um, of writing copy, your logo, picking a website design, your colors. It helps with all of that. Okay. So again, focus on what you're selling, what you have to sell today, whether it's a product or a service. All right. Number two, I want you to pick two social platforms that are your favorite, you're the most comfortable in, you enjoy, and that you feel your ideal customer um, lives in there that also enjoys it. Okay. And usually they're automatically aligned because most of us don't create something that we wouldn't like ourselves. So for me, um, for me, I Instagram is I love Instagram. I think Instagram's amazing. Instagram, Instagram stories, Instagram live. That's my number one. And my number two social platform is Facebook. Really, my number two is podcasting, but that's not a social platform, but it is a traffic driver. So I've picked my two, right? And you can't you can't do all things well unless you're unless again you have a team which you don't if you're starting up and even if you have your aunt Sally helping you aunt Sally's not going to be able to keep up with content on all the channels and then you'll burn out putting out all this content it won't be as valuable or good and it's going to be a disaster so just just listen to me okay pick two social platforms that you're going to concentrate on. One will be your primary and the second second one will you'll still have content on there. It just won't be your, you know, your super go-to. Okay? Then if you do not have a website yet, don't kill yourself over this. Please. Don't kill yourself, don't go spending a fortune. Go use a plug and play site like a Kajabi or a Squarespace. And there's tons of them now that are out there. And literally, it walks you through setting up a template. You can pick your colors. You can upload a graphic, all of that stuff. Use that. What websites really are for now, okay? And and this is, I'm talking for startup. I'm not talking, you know, you're way down the line and you have you know, hundreds of tangible products you're selling or something like that. You're a startup. Okay. You can always, when you have a lot more revenue, you can always upgrade your website. But really what a website is, it is your digital, it's your digital uh, business card. It's saying I'm legit. I have a website. Here's some information about me. Here's photos about me. You know, Here's here's some stuff to look at if you're selling some products. Here's, you know, here's my shopping cart of products or here's my link to my Etsy store. And so people can build a credibility, you have a digital footprint, they can get a nice introduction to you. That's all it is. Okay, most people I work with and myself included, my sales are made off of lead pages, meaning sales pages, meaning click funnels that have nothing to do with my website. They're literally these one pagers that you can put all your content in and videos in to sell whatever it is you're selling and you're driving Facebook ads to it, or you're driving, you're using your email list and sending people to it, or you're dropping that link in, in, you know, in Instagram and sending people to it. They don't even go to my website. Seriously. I mean, my prime company I've had for 10 years, TLC Enterprises, 
the site's ridiculous. I mean, you know, it's it's basic and you know it's basic when you get there and I've never had one person care and I have companies worth billions and billions of dollars that hire me as a consultant <laughs> and I have for years. No one cares. They actually care more about my LinkedIn because LinkedIn, when you're linking to companies, et cetera, you can't bullshit and say, oh, I worked for I worked for this company or I worked for Nordstrom or something like that. You're linking to Nordstrom like you actually can't lie. You can try, but you'll get busted. Same with like you can't put that you have a college degree that you don't because you'll get busted. So a lot of companies actually care more about your LinkedIn profile and myself when I'm hiring, if I'm hiring a high level person. I go to their LinkedIn above all else. And then I also Google search them and do a hardcore background check. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, I digress. So just use a plug and play. If you're very comfortable with WordPress, good for you. But WordPress isn't isn't straightforward and annoys me when people say it is. If it was straightforward, I could create my own WordPress site in, you know, four to five hours of really hyper-focused time and a lot of coffee. And I cannot. And I am not a super techie person, but I'm not techie inept. And that's why I love teaching people who aren't techies, because a lot of people who say they're not, you know, technically inclined, give very ridiculous uh, recommendations that do do require a lot more of a techie mindset. So unless you already know WordPress, I wouldn't bother. Um, I would go again with like a Squarespace, a Kajabi or one of, you know, one of those sites that does it for you that literally in a very user friendly way takes you step by step. Okay. And when you're picking your template and your colors, I want you guys to think of that ideal client for the thing that you're selling, you know, the type of stuff you'll be selling for the next year. Remember, you're going to be making money, especially if you're listening to my show, you're going to be making money sooner than a year. You know, you should be making money within 90 days, but you you'll be making money so you can always upgrade your site. So don't go, oh, but I want to also have, you know, I also want to have an office supply line and I want to create planners. So what about this? And what about that? Well, you're not selling that now. Go back to now. Even if you're bringing in a great amount of money. And at six months from now, you can upgrade your site six months from now. Just go with what is clean, easy, professional, and fast now. Okay. Number three, in terms of content, this is the part where, you know, I admittedly have gotten stuck and have annoyed, um, annoyed people that I've hired to help me. And this is where a lot of clients get sucked into, you know, sucked into hours and hours of work. It's, it's content. It's writing content, valuable content for your social media platforms, which is why I only want you to do two. Because if you have, you know, YouTube and Instagram, now you have, you know, now you have a written long caption and a cool picture. And then now you have video. Now you have to make sure, you know, you you write the video description and the headline and all that. That can take a lot of time for anyone who who's doing it right. It can really take a lot of time. So then when you add on something like a website or you're doing sales pages, you have to write a shitload of content in order to populate that that website and and truly your sales page. The good thing is, is once you write it, it's written and you can just always go back and tweak it. It's not like something you have to redo every day, every week or every month, but it's still a lot. So if you're not quite ready to pull the plug on a website yet, Um, And even if you are ready, have content written first. I wouldn't want you paying for a monthly service on things. And now you're paying for a monthly service and you're what because and you're paying for web hosting and your your domain name and you're paying for all this stuff. But now it's two months later before you have the content to populate the website because you couldn't believe how much content and time that takes. And it does take time. Think about it. You have the homepage, you have about me, you have, you know, da 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 da. You have you have all these different pages. And there's even things in there that you don't even think about that you go, oh my God, I have to write for this too. 
And it's a lot. So start, that's something you could start like tonight. Then it's not overwhelming. If you're like, I'm going to write one piece of content a night for my website or something like that. That's even, that's even a great idea. Now it's not overwhelming. Um, And the same goes for social media. We batch content two weeks in advance um, here at Project Me. And I also batch my podcast episodes. And I don't mean I'm doing it like, and, and with podcasts, I sometimes run, usually it's three weeks in advance because a lot of times the guests come on and they have something that they want to promote So if we go too far in advance, you know, it wouldn't line up with our guests. But we batch about three weeks for podcasts, too. If we didn't, I would always be chasing my tail because I'm heavily involved in content. The content is the brand, the brand I'm a big player in. So you better believe I have to spend time on the content. So we batch it. So I even will say like, okay, by this date, I have to have all the social media stuff done and then a day just to review it to see if there's typos or if I don't like something. Or, you know, sometimes I'm even at, in line at the grocery store or I'm somewhere patiently having to wait, like the DMV or something like that. And I will, um, I'll take out the note section in my phone and I'll start brainstorming content ideas or headlines or video ideas. And I put them in there. I keep a notebook in my car. I keep one in my purse. Um, I like using the notes app on my phone a lot because then I can easily, um, you know, email it to myself or someone on my team. And this way I'm, I'm constantly, you know, being inspired. It makes the content process fun. Plus, it's less overwhelming, right? Even if you have bullet points written out, it's less overwhelming when you actually go to write the thing. So that's a big one. Content, I mean, I really irritated the hell out of the person I hired to do my Project Me site which is also very basic if you go on it. Um, I had the professional photos done for that. Um, I highly recommend those if you can't afford that. Um, Just have someone take really, really nice pictures of you um, on even if it's on an iPhone or something like that. But put effort into it. Don't have some like awkward, like dark colored, like selfie in the corner of your office or something like that. Like put some effort into it. You don't have to have a ton of pictures if you, you know, don't have access to that or don't have time, but definitely so people can see your personality. That's a key one. So I knew to have those professional photos. Um, but what I didn't have is I wasn't thinking through all the content that's needed for a website. I was like, yeah, of course there's an about me. There's, there's, you know, the section about hiring me to speak. You know, there's ask me questions. But then I was forgetting about like, my whole ebook section, you know, the free the free financial guide I have on there. And then once people um, give me their name and email, so we can send them the guide. Well, then there needs to be the copy that goes around the email that has the guide. I mean, you don't just like send them uh, an email that has just a link in it. (laughs) That would be like very spammy looking and rude. So I wasn't thinking about all of that. And therefore, I was putting my website was so delayed because I had to write so much more content. And when you're forced to write something, it doesn't come out as nice. So a lot of that particular uh, tip is coming from even a recent, right? A recent, oh, if I had known, known better, I would do better. Okay. So number four um, is I want you guys from the beginning to save money in your budget for Facebook ads. Um, So if you're someone saying, Tiffany, I'm starting with almost no money. Okay. Well, welcome to the world of entrepreneurship. Very few people start with a lot of money. And those who start with a lot of money, you already know who the hell that they are. Okay. Hello, like Kylie Jenner with her makeup line. You already know who she is. Like it's no secret. Like when a celebrity starts a line or one of the house, you know, Orange County housewives or something like that, you already know who they are. So most of the world, when you're an entrepreneur, you're starting with little or nothing, or you have a small savings or your primary job is helping support it. For example, 
my primary company, my parent company, TLC Enterprises. TLC Enterprises is to this day still funding Project Me with Tiffany Carter. Why? Because Project Me with Tiffany Carter is very new and it is spending more money than it's making at the moment. And that's okay because I know where it's going, but I have funding from there. So they're from self-funded. I don't have to have a partner alone or anything like that. Um, so if you're not in a situation like that or you're not you know, able for whatever reason to use your primary job as your funding or part of it, there is a way that you can, everyone can save some money, right? You can save, maybe you're not going to have your coffee out for a while. I'm not saying forever. I'm not trying to like punish you, but for a while. And when I say like, fit, you start Facebook ads, I always tell people you start with $15. So I'm not talking a lot here. Cancel. If you have weird magazine subscriptions, or if you have um, music or, or, um, you know, TV streaming s- subscriptions that you really don't use or just pare it down just to having one. So pare it down and save that money. I'm going to cough. Hold on. <coughs> we do everything live to tape here to keep it real. So then you guys get to hear when I cough or sneeze or God knows what else. Anyway, so save money for Facebook ads. That's super important. Okay, so I actually paused it because I had a full coughing attack and that would have been going too far. Okay, so save money for Facebook ads. I don't want you to stress about the ads. I don't want you to think about the ads. I don't want anything other than save room in your budget for Facebook ads. Create a freaking jar if you need to or a little box or even if you have a separate free business checking account or something like that, I want you to start accumulating money for Facebook ads now. And that's it. Don't go any further with it. Don't start tripping about it. Don't start Googling about it. Just save for it. Okay. Final number five, don't get pulled into the social media vortex. I call it quicksand. Wow. You know, it used to be that You know, I know a lot of people still binge watch TV and that kind of thing. But I mean, it used to be we could get sucked into hours of just like sitting in front of the television. And then it turned into getting sucked into Facebook and sucked into other social channels. Then it turned into being sucked into both at the same time. Now you're watching TV and you're scrolling Instagram and now you're just like in a heavy, deep trance and a quicksand and you've not made one dollar. Not acceptable. Not a good plan ever, but really not a good plan when you're starting a business because your time and your energy are your best and most valuable resources. So you have to understand like time really is money because you're having to do so much of the work uh, yourself because you're not going to you know, pay a bunch of people um, until you start generating more money, your time is very valuable. So would you pay an employee? Let's just throw out a number. Would you pay an employee even $50 an hour to watch TV and scroll Instagram? Just ask yourself that. Would you even pay them $25 an hour to do that? I already know your answer. It's no. So why are you doing it yourself? Because that's you have to think about that's what that's what your whatever your time is worth. That's what you're doing. It's okay to take a break, of course, and like zone out for a little bit. We all need to do that. But I will even set an alarm on my phone. I'll even set you know like set the timer on my phone. Um, so that I snap out of it because I can get caught up in it because I'm so fascinated by reading people's captions and especially if they have, you know, good tips or content or even and I also love looking at, you know, all people's cool office decor and some obsessed with office supplies and other people's bulldogs. I can get caught up in it, too. So I set that timer. And once it goes off, I have to put it down like, okay, hands off, phones down, like pencils down, like they say in school, you know, it's like, gotta stop. Don't get caught up in the vortex. Not good. It is so time sucking. And, and also it is something that could be enjoyable, such as like looking at some of your favorite, you know, people's feeds or people you admire, you know, like, 
like Project Me with Tiffany now. <laughs> I hope you I hope you follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I'd be hurt. Um, but even if you're inspired or you're getting great information, that's wonderful. But it can start out like that. And it can actually switch and flip to the negative real quick. Like, oh my God, look what this person's doing. Look what that person's doing. They're making so much money. Oh, I just clicked and went on their website. It's so beautiful. And I don't even have a graphic. I don't even have a logo. Oh my God. And they have all these amazing, beautiful videos done. And they have headlines on their videos. And I don't even have anything to even sell yet. I mean, it can go real negative. So that's another reason to limit your time because that's not going to help you. Most all these people that have all these things have been doing this for some time. Even even people who've been doing it a year, they have a year on you. A year is a long time. Six months is a long time. My podcast launched June 20th, 2018. That's not that long ago. I'm now number 12 on the business charts of all business podcasts in iTunes. And we're in the top 120 of all podcasts in all categories, period. And that's just since June 20th. So time, a lot of things can happen in time, a short period of time, longer time, but time is on my side. It wouldn't be fair for someone to compare a podcast unless they're like a celebrity or something that's starting a podcast today. And I started on June 20th. That's not fair. It wouldn't be fair for you to compare your business that you're starting with mine when I've been an entrepreneur over 10 years. Well, that's re- that's crazy. And it'd be crazy for me to compare myself to people I look up to in the online space. It would be crazy for me to compare myself to them because they've been at they've been at it way longer than me, have a large team and a huge presence. And it can just turn sideways if we get caught up in that vortex. So set a timer, put the phones down. Any questions that you guys have about starting up an online-based business or taking your business um, to the digital world, you guys can hit me up on Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany. DM me your questions. I love answering them. My team makes sure make sure that I see them. They star me so that I can answer your questions. I love helping people out. I love being that person to you that I wish I had when I started. So allow me to be of service to you guys and give you give you some extra help because we could all use it, right? So wishing you the best health, wealth, and worth always. And thank you so much for listening. Talk to you soon, guys. If you enjoyed this podcast, please write a five-star review on iTunes. Not only will this make me super happy, but it will allow more listeners to find our special show. Simply help me help others.